I would like to discuss a little bit about the situation in Ukraine and our uh, the United States involvement in that as well as Vladimir Putin of Russia. First off, I'd like to uh, get straight that uh, officially we should not refer to Ukraine as the Ukraine as we used to. Uh, that terminology should have and for the most part did end uh, back in 1991 when the parliament uh, officially declared their separation from uh, the Soviet Union. So we should be referring it to Ukraine instead of the Ukraine even though phonetically it's it's uh, it just seems to roll off the tongue better when you say the Ukraine, for whatever reason. Anyhow, the situation over there is very dangerous. And, uh, of course, these are my own thoughts from what I am observing. And our position, the United States position, is uh, greatly diminished. Our influence is greatly diminished by the current uh, Obama administration. It seems that history keeps on repeating itself, though uh, many of us in modern times, especially those in elite sectors, continue to uh, demand and hold steadfast that uh, countries you know, no longer uh, just come on in and override another country. And obviously we are seeing that this is not true. And uh, these things do continue to happen. As time goes on in various countries, the mindset of the people, especially those who are very extremist, very liberal in, in uh, their progressivism, uh, those feelings become emboldened. Those feelings become harsh even to a deadly measure. And when I talk about a deadly measure, I'm talking about there's no uh, conscience when it gets to that level. There's no sorrow. There's no consequence. And so that makes it a very dangerous world. And, you know, looking over the history of Vladimir Putin, he is uh, ex-KGB. He's, he's a very emboldened, uh, communist at heart and so it is no doubt in my mind that he is wanting to return uh, the empire of Russia back into a communist state because that is where power is and it is the mindset of Vladimir Putin that he is one of those that requires more power it's what gives him purpose it's what gives him uh, uh, notoriety and recognition in the world and it truly is a uh, competition between Vladimir Putin and uh, President Obama unfortunately we're losing but you do not take a military a military force you do not cross the border into another uh, country unless you have the intent on taking that country over in uh, by one means or another now Russia has a very very unique well not so unique they have a an interesting hold on that entire hemisphere Russia is very rich in uh, natural resources and primarily in natural gas now Russia supplies most of Europe with natural gas and uh, especially those countries that uh, back in the 90s have seceded from Russia and so that obviously creates a very definite hold that Putin has on these other countries and so when you see an injustice 
uh, like this take place where Russian forces are uh, pridefully entering into Ukraine and into Crimea, that you are not going to see a whole lot of pressure from other countries that are under the rule of or under the influence of Russia. You see Germany, you see Italy, uh, uh, Germany, like I mentioned, but you see all these other countries that are giving their announcement uh, that although they they think that it, it's not a right thing to do for Russia to uh, enter another country, they are far from demanding that he pull back his forces. They are far from demanding the threat of military action. And these are all coming from the G8. And so this is part of what makes the NATO alliance a very ineffective tool. It can be a very effective and beneficial tool, but when you have a major player of NATO, particularly Russia, who all of a sudden wants to uh, exercise his own uh, wants and needs and knows that he can get away with it because of how NATO is set up and because of what kind of influence Russia has over the other countries. You're not going to see a whole lot of uh, backlash from what they're doing, especially from those countries. Now, the United States has a historical uh, responsibility to the world. Now, the Obama administration has always based their platform on the idea, not the fact, but the idea that the United States is a bully country, that the United States needs to be more compassionate, more passive, more uh, on the same level playing field as others, and that we're just not, we're just the bully kids on the block. And that is a devastation to what the United States is supposed to be. We are, at heart, the greatest nation on the face of the earth. What I mean by that is our beginnings, our very uh, foundation, the Constitution of the United States, provides the basis, provides the foundation of the free market enterprise. It provides the basis of Personal liberty, personal freedom. Freedom of what? Personal freedom to grow and enlarge, to become industrious, to have a dream or an idea and pursue it, and to gain benefits from that. When you gain benefits from that, you then spread that. It creates jobs. It creates uh, funding. It creates prosperity for millions. That's the basis of a great nation. That is the basis of what we have, uh, for so many years, tried to invite other countries to adopt. And that has become very, very difficult, even to deadly measures. Because you can't force uh, a people to accept your idea of, uh, of, of government and prosperity when they don't share the views that the people at the founding of this country had okay they had the they had the true spirit of of wanting freedom wanting to build their own great nation and wanting the freedom to worship as they please wanting to be free from the oppression of uh of great britain and so it is my opinion that the Obama administration has all but destroyed the uh, exposure of this nation as a great nation. 
because of our foundation, because of the Constitution of the United States, because of our unique um, beginnings, we have the moral and economic obligation to the world, and I believe designed by God, to be a role model for these countries. Now, for so many years, other countries have looked up to the United States in a positive way. They have wanted to emulate the United States. They have wanted to, uh, many people have wanted to be industrious and have tried to change their own countries, their own government, to be more like ours so that they can benefit themselves, they can be prosperous, they can benefit the world. Now, uh, now, part of that is to have a strong military. And that's got nothing to do with being a bully. In order to maintain that moral and economic authority in the world, in order to enhance your humanitarian efforts around the world in times of disaster or for those in third world countries, you have to be able to have a very strong military. Okay? You know, in times past, not too many years ago, uh, our, our budget was at least 10% going to defense. Now it's down to like 2 or 4%. But you have to have that strong military. Uh, military because there will always be tyrants out there like North Korea and like Russia you will have those tyrants out there who eventually have the what's the word for it the hormone need if you will to get their rocks off and flex their muscles of their military they have to expand they have to show that they mean business and so uh, they're gonna exercise their military the United States has that moral and economic authority to be that shining light in the world you have to have a country like that and in order to gain the respect from not only the third world countries and those receiving assistance from the United States, you have to create a military innovative enough, state of the art, manned enough, happy enough that even the tyrants would fear you. That was expressed for so many years during the Cold War. We had a very good, mighty uh, military. We had a strong leadership uh, at times, minus Jimmy Carter. But we, we as a country, had a pinnacle uh, mantle to uphold. And I just fear for our future because I believe the current administration has all but destroyed that moral and economic compass that we are that the United States is endowed with through our beginnings through our Constitution so it's got nothing to do with being the bad guy on the block we have for years been and we still continue to be the greatest humanitarian contributor and and you know things of that type but we have a moral compass to be uh, upstanding to be truthful to be honest to help those who are in need and so I, I just hope and pray that our next administration will emulate that and will bring us back to a seat of prosperity and I hope things work out well for Ukraine and may their independence be validated, recognized by the world, and God bless.